Hello, Minnesota sports fans. Welcome to the show to be named later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, alongside Mike Tyson's former, former sparring partner, Noah Storzinger. And buddy, I got to tell you, we got a lot to talk about and it might not be aesthetically pleasing to the listener uh, because I have a lot of things that I want to get off my chest and I don't know if they... It's one of those kind of, you know, yin, yin to your yang kind of things. I'm going to be positive, but I'm going to be negative. And um, boy, my 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 friends, I think, are are done watching football with me. But um, yeah, we, we've got a lot of things to cover. And I don't even know if we'll get to everything uh, because there is a ton of things going on in the Minnesota sports scene right now. Yeah, I, you know, I, you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the, the Tyson fight. Did you watch it? Okay. Yeah, what, I, a mistake. what a mistake! You want to you want to do this now? Let's yeah, let's 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 get to it right now. Well, I just had to to you know I know you don't got Netflix and all that stuff, but I guess appar- apparently because I didn't watch it either, but I I saw all well, of no the because the streaming was so bad. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah, I saw Netflix had had done so bad, and but I guess there was one shot where Mike Tyson's ass is just yep just yep. right yep. in full frame. That was the so. highlight of the night. Yep, that was the highlight of the night, um, and it 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 does like I I wasn't gonna give a lot of um, time to the Mike Tyson fight because you knew it was gonna be a joke, and I wasn't. I mean, I, I first of all I didn't know the day of. I'm like, well, wait a minute, is Netflix? It's got to be a pay per view thing on it, but it wasn't, and there's no way they could have got away with pay per view on Netflix because the stream was so bad. It was listen, no. When you have to sit and look at Rosie Perez's still shot face, and we're not talking about do the right thing, Rosie Perez. Oh, you so stupid. We're talking about Rosie Perez now, and it just cuts to her face for, I don't know, 20 minutes. And then once they get the stream back going, it's the third round. It was the worst thing. And I'm going to do you one better because... I know we bring it up a lot and I know people are tired of me bitching and I've got all these, you know, white man problems that nobody in another country can deal with. But here's the deal though. You had Jerry Jones, because I believe it was something like the biggest boxing deal or something in Texas history or whatever it is. Jerry Jones says, Oh, I believe that Netflix is the future for the NFL, but nobody heard him say that because he was on a dead mic because the, the streaming service was so incredibly bad. I am telling you, if this is the future, then maybe maybe I am going to become my father. I'm going to become Vern Boss and say, you know what? I'm just not going to watch sports anymore. Because if I got to put up with that kind of bullshit, honestly, honestly. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's become such an issue of, like, I never thought I would have this issue in, in, in I we say it all the time. Like, can we just have one, two channels that we just watch the sports on? Like, like the good old days. And not that I have been around for the good old days very long, but, but, but boy, it is, uh, it's frustrating when I, I go to the channel that I want to watch. Oh, not there. Okay. Now I got to look up on Google. Where can I watch the Timberwolves? Oh, now I got to go here or now I got to go there. And it's, it sucks. And it's crap. And as far as, you know, technology and whatnot, how, why is it that I can talk to your mom in Greece during the Vikings football game, but you can't stream a fight and, you know, and and we didn't even get into what a joke the actual fight was, which you knew it was going to be. It it was just a clown show. Um, I mean, I felt bad. Like this guy came into work. He's like, I lost $500 on the fight. And I'm like, what are you an idiot? You bet on that fight. It was all staged. It was all anyways. All right. Let's put that one to bed. Let's get to uh, one of my favorite topics, the Minnesota, I don't know, you can see the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Tell me before we really dig deep here, what, what is the deal? Like how, how, how are you dealing with watching this team right now? Because I want to let everyone know if, if, you know, People, I, if people watch this, watch this podcast or listen to it, <clears throat> I can't believe that you don't know that the Minnesota Vikings are eight and two right now, which is 
you know, like I say, playing with house money, but what, what are your feelings? Because I'm going to get into my feelings and it's going to take a long time, but what are your feelings watching these games? Like, like the last five games. So here's the thing. At, at the end of the day, when I'm looking at the Colts game, Jags game, Titans, I mean, you look at these games, you're like, okay, these are games you win, right? And at the end of the day, they did. They got the job done, uh, and, and they won. They 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 took care of business um, and got the W. At the same time, you watch how those games unfolded, and it 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 makes your blood boil a little bit, uh, especially with the Colts and the and the Jags game. Um, in Titans, there were some obviously some some interesting plays that that could have gone differently, but. Um, you know, it's it's very clear that this team, this is a good, a very good football team. This this defense is absolutely insane. It, it's a good defense. I know we questioned it a couple, uh, maybe a podcast ago, but I think this is an elite defense. Um, and I will and say, apparently, Blake Cashman does make up that make that much difference. Yeah. Apparently, uh, but but here's the thing: uh, Sam Darnold is where this team will prosper or suffer. Sam Darnold yep. is the guy that controls this team's destiny right now and where it goes. Because look, I, I think I mean they'll make I think they'll make the playoffs. Um, but but you know, when we get into that that round one, I, I don't I'm I'm a little nervous with, with Sam and he looked good against the Titans. Um but but he looked better. better. Let's say he looked better. Yeah. Um but you know it, it's it's I'm a little skeptical right now. So th that that's I guess what I what my question is is you know as as a fan or as teachers and uh, you know it, to the people that listen to our podcast or any other Vikings fans or whatever you you just maybe have to make your peace with the fact that yeah I believe the Vikings are going to make the playoffs and I'm happy about that I mean it, it always feels like I say like a like a Jewish kid at, on Christmas morning when your team doesn't make the playoffs, you know, because, and so I, I want to achieve one extra game because playoff football is so much fun. However, I think that we have to just make our peace with um, the fact that this is, you know, like the Vikings of the nineties where, yeah, you have a great year, but you're one and done when it comes to the playoffs, because I just don't see this team with your Sam, you know, with, with Sam Darnold um, going any, any further because after the last four, and I would say the last six games, maybe even seven, uh, I, you know, when, when I look at the way that those games would be played and I was like, okay, yep, you grind it out. It's an ugly win because that's all they talk about in the local media. And that's all fine and good, but you know, games that I was already chalking up when we were five and all games like Arizona and Seattle, those games actually scare me, which means that when you get to the playoffs and you're playing actually good squads in the playoffs and like, yeah, we beat the Niners ass, but when they get to the playoffs, they're going to be a different team. And so not only am I worried about really, really good teams, with Sam Darnold as my quarterback, I'm worried about the mediocre, the middle of the road teams that, you know, like the Cardinals, they, they might make the playoffs if things in the West continue the way that they are. But, um, but I'm, I'm just saying that a team that's even somewhat talented. Remember, we have had a lot of really bad teams uh, that we have, we have played in the last, in the last few weeks. And so it doesn't give you a lot of hope that, against a solid squad that the Vikings are going to win because they haven't done that against the really shitty teams. Yeah. You know, I think this bear, the, the bears matchup to me is where I look and here's the thing, the bears, they're not a good team. They're really not, you know, they, they, they beat some, some bad teams early on in the year, which I think got everyone a little excited. Um, but at the same time uh, you got a fun quarterback, um, some, some great wide receiver groups, some, some guys on defense, but you know, it's look, the, the bears for what happened to them the past two, three weeks are going to, 
I, in my opinion, they're going to come out fighting. And, and I, I think the Vikings, it, it's one of those games where I wish – I wish that field goal wouldn't have been blocked and they would have won because I think they would have came in flat okay. next week. But I'm just saying, like, this to me, oh, Cardinals is one thing, Seahawks is one thing, the Bears. I don't know why it's the Bears that if you win this game, I think we'll be fine. If you come out flat, that's where I'm going to get real, real nervous. Okay, and I, I want to get to the Chicago Bears, um, but that is – a little bit down the road because I still want to cover the last six weeks going in and I've got a whole tangent on the Chicago bears, but you know, here, here's the thing with the Sam Darnold because um, it, it got to a point where the, you know, it, you thought about a guy like Mullins last year and some of the choices that Sam Darnold has made and where he has thrown the interceptions in the end zone several times. And it's like, he reminds me of my, my high school basketball coach, Jim Wooster. What do you see? And, and like, that's, that's the, the, the alarming thing and how it is so hard to watch this team because, you know, a Jacksonville game, you would have been absolutely tickled pink to have a defensive performance like they did in Jacksonville. And yet it, it, it was barely, barely winnable game. Now um, here's the thing with, and, and like I say, my friends, I, you know, might, might be done watching football with me. I mean, this started a while ago, started even in green Bay. I don't remember this actually happening, but my good friend P has brought it up about four times in the last two weeks. When the Packers were attempting the onside kick, apparently I said, I can't watch. And I turned away and covered my eyes and said, they got it. They got it. Right. And that's where it started. <clears throat> then the Detroit game, uh, I, I had to say, I mean, my, my good friend D, which I don't mind bringing, bring his name up because I think he is one of the, one of my friends, only friends that actually is a regular listener to this podcast, but he brought it up against the Lions. We were at the game and he said, but well, you really are negative, man. Okay. Maybe. Then you had the Colts game and it, it, against the Lions. I did tell him, I said, I got a bad feeling about this one. Then you had the, the Rams the next week. I was outside hanging out with another buddy. And I said, I got a bad feeling about this one. Then it came to the Colts game. And I said, I got a bad feeling about this one. Now we, we lucked into that one. Jacksonville, same thing. Out smoking a cigarette. I said, I got a bad feeling about this one. And basically everybody was telling me, man, you are way, way, way too negative. So I'm going to tell you, Noah, this is something that I've been toying with. And I, I used it last week uh, against Tennessee. All I do now is because I'm way too negative. My friends are getting tired of me. And now what I am doing or what I did against Tennessee and what I'm going to do the rest of the year is semenity now, semenity now. So I did that and they said, you got to stop that. That's, that's so stupid. Not gonna. I can't win. No, if I'm negative, my friends rip on me. I tried to be Mr. Positive and I believe me, semenity now worked. And I still get heat for it, but here's the thing. Well, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I'll get to that. I say, go ahead, go ahead. Anything that you want to say, because you know why I'm negative because I live in Minnesota and I've, I've watched you. Minneapolis St. Paul is a handful of metropolitan areas that have so many professional teams and a major university. And we have two motherfucking championships in my lifetime. And, you know, not since the 50s, if you want to go back then. So I got it. Honestly, I'm telling you, this is this is the way that I am. And I'm going to say this, that no, you know, you, you can't have it both ways, I guess. Your thoughts. Yeah, you know, because I have not even, I have not witnessed uh, a Minnesota Twins championship, uh, the only championship I've 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 seen. It. Uh, well, I guess I didn't even watch it. Was the Lynx, which no yeah. one no one cares. Um, but you know, so 
I'm not there yet. I'm not at your level yet. I'm still optimistic, uh, a young optimistic kid uh, hoping for a championship. So I'll, maybe I'll get there, but I'm still hoping to see something. But, I, you know, I think it's just a game of football that makes you – I don't know. Like it's so much easier to just be – negative with football because when i watch any other sport i'm not as negative as i am watching football you could ask he asked my brother he actually sat down and watched the rams game with me i was excited because he's starting to get a little more interested in sports um and uh boy was that a little bit of an eye-opener for me to see like how much i yell at the tv when i watch football yeah. um but i don't know like when i look at the like i have the games pulled up when i look at these games and i think back to what I watched, um, look, we said it all last year with the Wolves, like, oh, that's a game the, the Wolves last year, they lose, right? I mean, these are games that old Vikings teams lose. All, like, all, all, all of these, the Colts, the Jaguars, the Titans. Does it say something about this being a good team that, like, look, you didn't score in the first half with the Colts. You came back and you scored three touchdowns to win the game. Uh, the Jaguars, it, you didn't even score a touchdown. Your quarterback has thrown multiple interceptions in the end zone. Yep. You still won the game. Uh, the Titans, you just never felt like you had a a crazy grip and you still pulled out the game. I, I feel like that's got to say something, wouldn't you? Um, I I just I, – I can't believe that you would be upset about being 8-2, and two, and yet here we are. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I, I keep reading everywhere about – how Sam Darnold has never been a 500 quarterback anywhere he's been and what a great job Kevin O'Connell has done. And only Kevin O'Connell could do the job that he's doing with Sam Darnold. And so, you know, it's kind of a feel good story of the year. They win on Sunday. They will be guaranteed above 500 record. First time in Sam Darnold's, you know, in his, in his career. Um, but as far as the negativity goes, man, like like I say, I got it honestly, and no sidewinding, bushwhacking, <sighs> crucker croaker will ever change the way the way that I am because that's that's just the way it is, and 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 how I watch my Minnesota sports. Now, when we get to the Chicago Bears, here's another one. So, because you brought it up, and so I'm going to have to talk about it. You wanted. The Bears to, to beat Green Bay last Sunday, correct? I think everyone okay. did, but yeah. Well, and then, you know, and my friends, I, I said no. And and here was my way of thinking. Um, I because I, I took a ton of heat. So when when that was coming down to the end, because the Vikings had already cleared, yes, I know we are in competition with the Green Bay Packers, but I'm not really worried about them either. But I said, here is my way of thinking. I would much rather that the Chicago Bears are still on a four-game losing streak rather than getting momentum by beating Green Bay and then thinking, oh, now we can beat the Vikings. And I got all this heat and blah, blah, blah. I went outside because I was getting a little upset. And when I came back in, this is what I what I came back into. Well, congratulations, Johnny. Your Green Bay Packers have now won and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, now look, here's the deal. I Like I say again, I, would you rather face a team that is still playing down? They've been firing coaches. They have no direction right now. And they, why would you want to face a team that might be getting a little momentum by getting their first win in a long time after a brutal stretch? But I said, here's the deal. I don't care, motherfuckers, either way. If the, if the Bears win or they lose, I don't care because the Vikings are going to kick their ass on Sunday. You heard it here, right here, because everybody is saying that the Vikings don't have a shot. All week I've been hearing them. Nah, man, I'm from Chicago, man. You know, bro, and we are going to we're gonna kill you. This is our game. This is our game. You know what? I would love to introduce Caleb Williams to the Minnesota Vikings defense and a guy by the name of Blake Cashman, okay? And so... Here's what I'm going to do for you, son. I'm going to Joe Namath this shit. I am guaranteeing a victory on Sunday against the Bears, and y'all can fuck off. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, score prediction. I'm going to say 28-10 Vikings. And and Sam, Sam Donald, 
Semenity now, Semenity now, is going to throw for two touchdowns, no interceptions. Hell yeah. All right. I, I, I got to say, uh, as negative as you are, um, I I feel like I need to, and maybe it's my own perception and I feel like I need to take credit for it. Ever since we started this podcast and we started talking sports more and more and more, you've gotten more positive. Oh, okay. Hey. I think right. that's no, 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 no. I think that's the Noah effect. Uh, okay, uh, but... the show's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you. I will. I will take that as a compliment because, like I said, um, and this is how bad it was. I mean, if you're listening right now, you got to be like, now wait a minute. This guy is now guaranteeing a victory, and he's all confident, and he was just ripping on it in the Jacksonville game. I went. <laughs> I went out in the last two minutes because I knew we were going to lose that game when it was 12 to seven. I went out for a cigarette and I do this sometimes. I take one for the team. If I go out and smoke, well, first of all, I don't have to see the terribleness, but when I come back, it has happened more than, than not where I go out in a crucial situation. Good things happen. And I try to explain this to my friends, but they, they, they don't see it my way all the time. So um, there you go. Uh, anything else on your Minnesota Vikings? Do you, oh, wait, do you have a prediction for Sunday? Uh, yeah, I think they'll pull a win out. I, I'm going to say 21-16 uh, uh, final. Okay. But now you, you were buying into all this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul hype that the Bears are going to suddenly find their 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 track. They're going to get back on track because this is a really bad football team right now. And I know that they're playing at home, but come on, you've got to think that the Vikings have a little momentum going into this game as well. I, I yes, the Vikings absolutely do. The the only my thought process is, and I I can't I. Bring it back to the Minnesota Timberwolves, what they experienced earlier this year. Um, you've got a team that, you know, they've got pieces to win games in a sense, um, and they've just had two embarrassing losses on the year, and they're they're gonna they're gonna fight and 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 try to get a dub. Uh, I think back to the Minnesota Timberwolves, who um, you know played the Portland Trailblazers back to back. And this team who came off of a 40 point loss, yep. their coach had told them, Hey, if you sleep tonight, you're a loser. And I said, well, we're going to lose both those fucking games. And guess what? We came out flat and lost both games. And so that was my thought process of, I've seen it happen before. You got a team who just got embarrassed and they're going to come and try to scrape one out. So that was my thought process. And, and, you know, and, Oh, we got plenty to talk about with the wolves. Um, but I don't know. There's something about the bears this year. Um, and something, I mean, if you talk to most of the people that talk to me about sports, you know how I feel about Caleb Williams and I can't wait to smash that dude into the dirt, man. I, I really, I mean, I, I do. And I, I don't wish, you know, any specific harm on anybody, but I mean, I hope they hit that fucker hard. I really do I, enough that he doesn't want to play football anymore. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of confidence that I, I have. And so, I mean, I'm really looking forward to watching Sunday with my friends because uh, you're going to see a very positive, confident, maybe overconfident, but I don't care because I don't get to do that very often. So there you go. So, uh, so I, uh, I just started a, uh... I downloaded Prize Picks. I'm starting to do some sports betting here. Uh, in the in the spirit of that, um, mm -hmm. sacks total sacks on Caleb Williams four over under. Man, that's tough. Man, I would have said four, <laughs> right, right, right across the board. You know what I mean? It, you you just don't know. I mean, the Vikings are. I mean, if you think about it, what was it? Was it the Colts game or was it the, the Jaguars game where they had no sacks, but then they had like four or five at the end of the, like in the fourth quarter? It was Jags. Okay. I mean, you, you just don't know, but that's what I'm hoping. And, you know, with the Vikings, here's the thing. That defense would be so much better if you actually had like a two-touchdown lead. They would play so much looser, but they can't ever do it. 
They can't ever just, you know, like put a team away where you go, oh, a good team, you know, uh, win, win these games. And, you know, obviously, you know how I feel about Detroit, but they're putting teams away the way that everybody thinks they should. And I think this defense, if you were up on the Bears by two or three scores, I think then you can play looser and you can take risks and that's when you would get, and then I would take the over on sacks, but I mean, you just don't know who's going to show up on Sunday. And that's the thing about the Vikings. And it is the thing about NFL football. You know, that's why they say any given Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'd, I'd probably take, uh, cause four would be, that's why I said four is my number. I think they'll get four on them. So, um, I think they'll take, I think they'll get four. And I think, uh, Mr. Uh, Van Ginkle is going to get two of them. That's my, my guess. Okay. All right. All right. Well, like I say, man, uh, you know, I apologize for, you know, to, to my friends who have to, who are, are forced to watch the game with me. But like I say, no sidewinding, bushwhacking, horn swoggling, crocker croaker is ever going to change the way that I, that I, I do things. And, you know, um, I'm still there every Sunday. So, um, Last thing, I, unless there's anything else about the NFL, I did want to bring up one last thing since we were already talking about Texas. Just remember that the Dallas Cowboys logo on, on, their, on their helmet, no, 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 that's not a logo. That's a rating, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you see there's a piece from their stadium fell down? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, what a dumb well no because that's after what cd lamb like i can't see the ball because of the sun and you know what are you gonna do to block out the sun and well what are you doing in games that are played outside motherfucker like i i mean if, if you're just gonna make excuses about why you suck i i just but to mike be zimmer couldn't happen to a better fucking dude man good good for him Absolutely. never will be a head coach ever again um, I gotta say though, why would you build your stadium knowing the sun on on a game on, on game days, knowing the sun shines into the end zone? Why would that's like building your ballpark with the sun right over yeah. the center fielder's head? Yeah. What do you the batter's eye? Right. I I don't know. I don't care. Don't yes. care because as far as everybody tries, national media tries to constantly make the Dallas Cowboys the the beginning and the end of every conversation. I don't get it. I do not get it. It does. So I had to take that shot at him because I don't like the Cowboys. Good guys wear black. All right. Or purple. Uh, okay. Uh, let's. This, this is, this is going to be a, might be a little uncomfortable. No. Uh, let's get to Timberwolves basketball because you know how I felt about, and I, you know, I came around, you kind of settled me down a little bit, but my initial reaction to the, the Carl Anthony Towns trade, and I get it. I understand everyone. We had to make that trade because of the, because of the money involved and blah, blah, blah. And Carl Anthony Towns is kind of a bitch and blah, blah, blah. But you know how I felt. And the one thing that I said, well, two things I said, number one, I do not want this team to be like the Minnesota Twins, who we're going to get to again, even though they're not playing ball right now. But I said, the Timberwolves are a team that did incredible things last year. And now my expectations are that they're going to get better. They're not going to take a step backwards like the Twins did. Okay. I said, I, I just can't have that. I can't have it. All right. The second thing I said was you're going to have about 10 or 15 games to figure this fucking shit out because there are too many teams in the Western conference that are too good. Okay. Right now, as it stands, they are eight and six. They will be playing this evening to a Toronto team that they never have luck with, even though we beat them this year. And so I am, you know, I'm going to put this uh, to you, Greg Marmalard that you got one game to figure this out because at eight and six, that is not, that's just not going to do it. 
it's not going to do it for in the Western Conference. And my buddy brought up, he said, Johnny, the Western Conference and NBA basketball, there are so many good teams. It's 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 never been like this. This is like a monumental year for how many good teams. Don't care. Don't care, D. You know why? Because the Minnesota Timberwolves are supposed to be the cream of the crop leading all of those really, really good teams in the Western Conference. And right now they're not. And so now you're talking about slipping down to the five or the six spot, at least right now. I know it's only 15 games, but I'm saying you can't play catch up with this many good teams in the Western Conference. And the Wolves don't have an identity right now. They don't know. Your thoughts? Well, I'll give you that. The identity, like, I don't know. It, it's not, um, someone tweeted this out and said, it's not as fun watching Wolves basketball anymore. And I'll give them that one because I will say, yeah, it's not, it still looks clunky to me. Um, Edwards is, is still great. And, and you that's, know, it. that's your only identity you got right now. Right. And like the defense is gone. Uh, you know, the, the offense still looks interesting. Um, you know, I still have a hard time getting frustrated. No, I get frustrated with the team. I guess worrying right now, um, after they lost those two to Portland, I think I texted you, I'm frustrated but not worried um, in the sense of it's been 15 games. Um, the West was good last year. Like it, it, the West is just like like good basketball gets played in the West. The East is a joke. Yep. Um, yep. The West is, is, is good. And look, like – and I'm not comparing the Wolves to the Mavericks uh, at all, but I just want to let you know, remind people the sense of like, look, the Mavs were a six seed. Um, I think at, at, at one point they were like 10 or 11 during the yeah, year. They were close to not even making it. And, 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 and they, they figured it out. And, and it's not to say the Wolves still can't. Like, I mean, it's 15 games. Um, do I have my reservations about it? Yes, because I truly don't think right now Julius Randle fits on this team. Uh, DiVincenzo, I think, is going to figure it out. I, he's, he's a good good basketball player. I think he'll figure his shot out. And when he does, it's going to be a game changer. But the Randle fit to me right now is is I don't I, I don't like it. And it's hard to watch Carnathy Town put up a career year right now uh, in New York. But I will you say, know. I will say, uh, a lot of the stuff he's doing is shit he did with Minnesota, but obviously didn't yep. get the media attention. And now he's a god in New York, which pisses me off. But uh, the Knicks are still figuring out. They're they're nine and six. You know, they're they're right, right. there with the Wolves, right. um, losing games that they they shouldn't. So you know, it it's it's so early. I mean, definitely can be frustrated about it. Um, but there's still time. Okay, and so uh, you know, one one thing that I mentioned early on on podcast when the trade was made um was how Julius Randall would would fit in um I I mean like I say I I had a falling like calling some of my friends on group text idiots because of how they how they were looking at this trade and what what it was going to mean to this team and even got well, you know what? We have two starting fives right now and I'm like, yeah, you okay, fine. Then you have two starting fives playing on one team that are barely 500 right now. Okay. You know, and then I hear well, DiVincenzo, you know, he's just, well, he's just struggling the last couple of games. No, he struggled all season. Okay. And there might be a reason. And I'm not saying I don't like the guy, Jaden McDaniels, fuck off. Seriously, just fuck off because I, I'm done with this guy. You know, the Johnny Voss rule, the three guys, you always got to hate. He has been on that list. Since the podcast has started. Now, Julius Randle, I wanted to put on that list, except for the game against Phoenix, when 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 he did what he did, and his first reaction was to go to his family. And you know, and like this is his his wife. Like, I don't know if you've ever had that with your wife, where no, she's with you because she likes everything you bring, but you still gotta impress her and show her why she is with. I mean that that's what I saw from him. I'm like, I gotta I gotta think differently about him as far as just hating on him. But but he's not Carl Anthony Towns, folks. He's not. And that was evident. What was it against Portland? He had nine points in the first game against Portland. All right. When and 
when when I saw and and now we're out of the the Dubai Classic, right? Like pretty much you have one loss in that pool play and you're you're not making the next round. Yeah, you right? you got to if you can you can lose a game and still make it uh as a wild card um but you also like the point differential comes point in. Point differential. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um here's the th- here's the thing really quick about the the yeah. NBA Cup. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't care. I don't think that any. I really. It doesn't mean shit to me. It. What? It's the, the Dubai Classic. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, it, I don't care about that shit I either. Nice floor, nice floor, but that whatever. But it, and here's the thing: I actually think it benefits you, in a sense, uh, depending on who who makes it. Um, last year, I remember we we were supposed to face a couple of these teams that were in the cup. Um, but the schedule flips around to, to accommodate for the NBA Cup teams, and we ended right. up playing worse teams instead of the teams right. that were in the NBA Cup. So it actually helped us. And this year too, like if we don't make it, and some higher teams are up there that we were supposed to play, and that flip flops, and we play some worse teams. Quite honestly, I'd rather do that than win the NBA Cup. Because guess what? I forgot the Lakers won last year because I don't we're, care. We're one. Yep. And you know what? How does how, how does that help me out to know that NBA players just got a bigger paycheck because they won that shit? You know what I mean? I don't care. I don't care. What? Let's bring the NIT to NBA basketball. No one gives a fuck about the NIT or the Dubai Classic. I guarantee you if if it was, hey, you are guaranteed the eighth seed or, or a guaranteed a playoff spot, no matter like the, how okay. they figure it out, I guarantee you – that game, those games become chippy, and those games would be fun to watch. But, but you, you got to do it at the end of the year. You get with that, with with if if you actually said, okay, you're guaranteed a playoff spot. I mean, that's an interesting wrinkle that you bring up there. But does it does it bring the value of NBA basketball down by saying, okay, you win this thing? And you get an automatic berth in 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 the which you're talking about a team that maybe could have 30 wins. Probably not going to happen. But it, what if it did? Would it, in your opinion, would it bring down uh, the game of of basketball in the NBA, or would it? I mean, would, you understand my question? Would it demean the value of what you do during the regular season by putting a team in that, because you're right. Those games would be a lot more interesting. I would think. Right. Because in my head, you would have these teams, like if you guaranteed, let's say you win the NBA cup, you immediately like, Hey, you're guaranteed a playoff spot. Now, if you, if you win, you know, 60 games, you still, you know, you can be the one seed or whatnot, but let's say you won, uh, 30 games on the year, you're you're guaranteed a playoff spot. You'd become the the, the eight seed or however they want to do it. Um, now you couldn't do this tournament when they do it now. It's too early. You have to do it, I think, more in the January, February range when you got some right. teams that are a little more developed and it's it's you know teams that have a little more wins or whatnot. But um to me, if there's a 30 win team that's the eight seed compared to let's say the eight seed won 39 games, 40 games. I don't think it changes at all. I actually would be more interested to see this team that choked out an NBA cup victory just to get in. And now they're the eight yeah. seed. They'd be but playing then, the one then, seed. But yeah, I, I don't know how you would do it because like, let's say that you were guaranteed an eighth, eighth seed, you know, but that would mess with the play-in games. And, and I'd be fine with that. But let's say that you're a 65 game winner. You know what I mean? You won't give them the eighth seed. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I kind of like where you're going with that, but I, I just don't know how they would, how they would do it. You'd have to tinker with it because like I said, like if you win, I, I think it's more like, Hey, you're automatically guaranteed the eighth seed. But if you win 65 games, you're still going to end up, you're going to be the one seed if you won 65 games. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, record still plays into it. But, you know, you could win no games for the rest of the year, but you're still, you'd be the eighth seed because the seventh seed would have obviously won more games than you. So, right. be, so, you know, you'd have to figure it out with the plan and, and all that stuff. And I, 
I wasn't a fan of the plan. I like the plan now because quite honestly, single elimination games are fun. That's why I like the wild card games, to be honest, because they were they just had so much riding on every pitch, every possession, everything. Um, so I, I just I want the NBA to do more like the NBA Cup is it's stupid. I, I have nothing as a fan to cheer about it. Only then I want to see the court. That's it. That's all I want to see. But if if I knew my team could could lock in a playoff spot in January, like right. you know, it just create more of a of a want to watch the game because more and more has come out that NBA viewership is down. The product is just not fun until you get to the playoffs and, and it's create more stuff like that. That I think they're well, on to something with it. Like if if the only result is millionaires or you know hundred thousand dollar heirs are making more money because they win the fucking thing. What, what, how does that, how does that help me as a fan? It doesn't, it, you know what I mean? Do you, did they, I don't know if the Lakers have done it yet or if they do it. Do you raise a banner for winning the cup? Like, oh, I, I, I would hope not. Right. I, I mean, I we'll find out, I guess. I don't, Actually, I'm going to look it up because yeah, yeah, because I'm not. I I really don't know the answer to that. I do raise a banner. Are you? So what? You're going to have? Ah, so it's a it's a banner that <coughs> it's a it's a a big banner, and they'll be able to add more years to it. So it's one banner. You don't add can more and more banners. It's just you'll add a good. year. Do they so, put it in the weird colors, you know, like the floor? It it says it'll be it'll look different than the championship banners. So I would hope. Uh yeah, they do get banners. Okay. Well, I don't think that as a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, we have to worry about any banners um being held up. And and you know, my point was at the beginning of this year, I said, I don't think you're gonna get uh, the same out of Rudy Gobert. And that has so far been the case that it starts with him and his defense. And he even admitted to that. Um, our defense is not what we had last year. And I don't know if that's, you, you can't put that on Carl Anthony Towns. Um, but, you know, even the feel good, you know, shot of the year and, you know, how they had, and this is the first chapter in Julius Randle era in Minnesota. You can't feel good about beating a Phoenix team that you only took the lead at the last shot of the game pretty much. And they were missing Durant and Bradley Beal. You know what I mean? And you lose to Portland twice, uh, twice in a row. It's, it just doesn't have that, that, that same feel. And so, if, if you're taking a step backwards, man, you know, I hate to say I told you so. And right, it's early. I know that. But my my prediction at the beginning of the year was we don't get out of the first round this year. And I got to wonder right now the way it's looking, if if that, you know, I, I hope I'm wrong. But it's just not been as much fun this year, has it? No, no, it absolutely has not. I, I mean... I think we'll see what this team is made of on Sunday, uh, which no one will be watching because we'll be watching the Vikings. I mean, I think more people will watch that, but uh, we're in Boston. Uh, yeah. And Boston is a damn good team. Yeah, they just beat uh, Cleveland. Who thought Cleveland? Oh, Where yeah. did you come from, man? Um, but, you know, we have not won in Boston, I think, in since like 04 or something like that. Um, so – you know, I think we'll we'll see. I, I want to, even if we don't get a win with that game, I want to play them tough. I, yeah. I just want to see us play. Like if I if I know we play tough, I'll feel a little better. Um, it, like if I if I see some better defensive rotations, if I see some better offensive flow, I'll, I'll feel a lot better if we can play them wire to wire a bit. But um, even honestly, today uh, at the time of this recording, we play the the Raptors. Uh, no. We haven't won. We haven't. We've not won in Toronto no, no. in, in a, over a decade. So uh, this team has won. I think the Raptors have won like what two, three games. They're three and twelve. No, so, no. <laughs> e, not we'll good. Uh, you know, and and 
you know, I I don't know as far as, but, but, but I think the, the, the point that I made is that the, the team really doesn't have an identity. If, if, if you're going to go based on accolades from last year and, and what you accomplished last year and think that it's, it, it's going to be, uh, easy as pie this year because of what you did last year. And remember, you didn't do anything. You got to the Western Conference Finals. That was it. All right, which is more than only one other team has ever done, you know, in Minnesota Timberwolves history. But, you know, like I say, they should be the cream of the crop right now. What everybody was telling me, oh, John, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. This is the, you know, this, this just makes them so much better. And maybe down the road it does because, you're not paying cat, you know, what, what you would owe him four years down the road. And, and so, you know, maybe you gotta, you gotta play the long game and the shit is, you know, chess, not checkers. Uh, but really disappointing right now for me as, as a Wolves fan, like I, I might watch the wild tonight. I might. They're fun. Yeah. They're, except they're, they're, they're a fun team right now. They can't beat Dallas though. They just can't beat Dallas. No. No. All right. Uh, so speaking of taking steps forward and, and thinking that that's what you were going to do. Um, I know it is not, it's the off season, uh, but we got to go back to the Minnesota twins because the twins and the wolves kind of are go hand in hand because I, I, I've compared them as far as like, you know, and we talked about the twins doing monumental things, what, winning a playoff series? We're all going to start sucking each other's toes because they won one playoff series. But around these parts, that's a big fucking thing, okay? And what do they do? Went completely backwards. So, president of baseball operations, Dave St. Peter, steps down. This was last week. No, okay. All right, and I know that he claims, at least in the, the articles I read, that this has been two years coming, that he was. No, he's been here a long time, Noah. But to me, it feels like the rats leaving the sinking ship. And and, and the reason I say this is because now um, you have current president of baseball operations, Derek Falvey, who will become the team's chief executive over baseball and business. There are only two other executives in Major League Baseball, Toronto's Mark Shapiro and Tampa Bay's Matt Silverman, Silverman, who have similar roles, okay? Now, to me, that reminds me of my father taking a job, his first big church. My father is a Lutheran pastor. He gets his first shot at a big, big church because he's always in country, you know, country churches, country towns. Comes to Minneapolis, and the time that... They hired him. There were three pastors, okay? Within, I don't know, five years, they were down to one pastor, and they said, we're going we're gonna to get rid of the other two positions, which means more work for you, and we're going to cut your pay. Now, Derek Falvey doesn't have to worry. He's making bank, okay? But to me, it seems like a lot of people – are, are, are leaving the sinking ship because this is a sinking ship because I have other rumors that are, that have come up that make me want to puke, but your, your, your thoughts right off the bat on Dave St. Peter. Uh, I like it. Uh, Dave St. Peter had a lot of people calling for his job after this year. It, it, it very much could have been a process that, that maybe was in, in, in the works for two plus years, what, whatever, but when you look at, obviously the ownership group is is to blame, but when you look at the overall operations of the Twins, spending habits, uh, whatever, Dave St. Peter is one of those people that people forget to blame. Uh, Dave St. Peter is someone that you don't realize how much of a hand he has when it comes to how the Twins are run. And for all those people that are frustrated with how the Twins are run, Dave St. Peter is one of those guys and I think it was time for him to go truthfully. And he never, there was never accountability with him. I, I follow him on Twitter and he likes to tweet when shit goes right. But when shit goes wrong, it was, it was, you know, it didn't say, didn't say anything. Um, Felvey to me, it, it has been phenomenal ever since he's been here. 
um, whether it be the GM roles or, or whatever he's been doing. Um, I think he's going to slide in great in, in this role. I think he knows how he wants to run this shit and he's going to, going to do it how he wants. And I'm kind of here for that. Um, and every, like Falvey is the guy I didn't want. I did Thad Levine's one thing. Um, and it seemed more or less like he was the scapegoat. Um, but, but, but Falvey is someone I did not want to lose in this whole tear down right. of, a, of a season. So I'm glad that we get to keep him. Jeremy Zoll's going to move in. Yep. Um, I like yep. him. I do. Okay. But now are you, are you putting a lot of pressure on Mr. Falvey right now? And what, what I'm saying is, or is it, is it the poll ads just being the poll ads and saying, you know what? We cutting everybody right now because we are we are going to put it down to bare bones because I that, I mean this is almost a precursor to my my next deal on the ruin because I'm hearing that this is honestly being talked about but your thoughts because I mean that's what I see right now like well we just aren't making any money right now or we're losing money that we always counted on so fuck off to twins fans and everyone, because this is, I, I do not believe the twins are going to be a contender next year. I don't, you know, I, I don't necessarily think it's a, we don't want to spend the money and fill this position. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been around a big business for, for a decade of my uh, young working career. And I've seen a lot of uh, people that when a position opens up um, and you want to get a little creative and you have some good people on your staff that, that, that you need to continue to develop them. Falvey's one of those guys and they're going to, they're going to kind of alter a role a bit um, to, to, to develop this person a little more and give them more of a hand in the operation that they're already being successful in. So I think this is more of a, not necessarily a, a we're going to cut a bunch of a bunch more money here. I think it's more, we have someone who we really like and who's doing a phenomenal job and who's, okay. who's, who's put effort out there saying he wants to expand and do more on the, the business operation side. So we're going to alter that role a bit and give him more uh, to hopefully be, be successful in this role. I think it'll be different. I it, It's hard just with the whole potential sale thing. Like, I don't, I don't know how things are going to work um, with that. I've never really been, uh, involved in in things like that but but so I, I i think there will be some constraints when it comes to some things that i want people i think people are going to be quick to blame him uh for some things um but i think you still obviously would throw all that on the pullets for what they're doing right now okay well that brings me to my next point because you know i i don't i guess i i don't dwell deeply on rumors however this is something that i could see happening just because the writing has been on the wall so to speak it, 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 at least with the poll ads okay but here's the rumor that i am hearing right now that you ain't going to be able to afford carlos correa much longer and so the, the the rumor that i heard and i heard that it was a strong rumor that they are the twins are honestly thinking of dealing Carlos Correa. Now I heard to the New York Yankees or to the New York Mets. Hey, fuck out of here. All right. If, if, if you trade them to the Mets. Okay. But the, the, the rationale behind it was that the twins, because of all the money they're losing in TV deals and all the shit that's going on and a potential sale to a new owner. And we don't know what that's going to look like that we cannot afford to pay Carlos Correa the money that is owed him. And so they will shop him. And if, 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 you know, how much shit do we talk about the poll ads, but if they're on the way out and they're doing, they're vindictive and they're like, you know what? We have gotten a, a really, you know, everyone is just ripping on it. I could see that going down. Absolutely going down. And, and I could honestly see them doing that just, just to say, you know what? And, and then they would become the most hated owners since Norm Green. And I think they would, they would pass him because then they're saying, no, we never cared about you in the first fucking place. 
It was all about the money for us. And I mean, your thought, because I could see Carlos Correa going somewhere else. Honestly, I could based on what I just brought up. Yeah. I saw what you were talking about. I saw that there were a bunch of articles that came out really based off of like, I think someone just floated the idea or something to, to Falvey and he didn't, I think what people blew out of the water was he didn't say no. Like it was basically along the lines of like, would you shop Carlos Correa essentially? And he didn't say like, no, we're not doing that. He, he said some corporate answer, you know what I mean? Like just some jargon stuff that I think people read into a little too much. Uh, do I think Carlos Correa is a twin at the beginning of 2025? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do too. Do, do I think, could I, would I be so surprised? Would I be like blown, like a Carl Anthony Towns trade where I see him getting, tra- like, could I see him getting traded to, to New York? Uh, I wouldn't be necessarily surprised. Well, I mean, I, like I say, I, I, I don't, but I mean, Obviously, if if that were to happen, if if Correa was to go, I mean, I think you have to you have to look at until the sale of this team is done, we're not gonna we're not gonna see winning because because you need good players to win games. And and if you're gonna start getting rid of the best players that you have and the best clubhouse guys that you can, then they're, they're certainly not going to bring anybody in to help this team out. No, if you trade Korea in the off season, I'm like, I'd rather you trade off at everyone with like a full fire sale. <laughs> uh, like it, I'm talking, if you're getting rid of Korea, you need to trade Buxton. You need to trade Pablo. Uh, you need to trade Duran. You need to trade Griffin Jacks. Go yeah, but you're, then you're talking about a 10-year rebuild, and we've seen this in Minnesota before. No, I can't. I don't have a lot of time left. I'm 51 <laughs> fucking years old. All See, right? I, I don't have time for a 10-year reboot. I think if you if you fire sale it out, I am at the point where with trades, for the most part, I trust Falvey enough to, to know who to go get to – jump start it a little bit in the sense of you would still, you know, you'd still have a Matt Walner, a Royce Lewis, a Brooks Lee, uh, a, uh, uh, Walker Jenkins, uh, and a nice pitching staff still there. Um, but you know, any guys with, with sort of value, I'd, I'd want to go out, but I think you could get some good pieces for it, but that's my thing. I think if you trade Correa, you need to, you need to rebuild. Right. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I got a kick out of was uh, apparently in, in folks said, Oh, they were upset. Former twin will go to division rival. That can't be good. And so I'm hearing Max Kepler to the Cleveland Indians and, and what, because he had three home runs in Cleveland. Wasn't, wasn't it in Cleveland that he had three home runs in one game. Yeah. And so now you're going to go on that. I'm like, you know what? If, if we, when we play the Cleveland Indians, I want Max Kepler in the fucking lineup every time we see him. Yep. No, he's a uh, in here's here's I'll I'll put money on this. He's either a a New York Yankee or he's a Miami Marlin. Oh, okay. I I could see him going to the Indians. I really could. Um I could see him mm-hmm. signing with the White Sox too. Okay. Uh either one, White Sox or the Marlins, you'll never hear of him again at least in New York, he might get a pinch hit opportunity every once in a while, but I can't see him as helping that team at all. Right? Like, no, the guy had look, he, <coughs> and I like, I liked Max Kepler just 2019 juice ball era. And that was, that was it. I yeah. like that. That was the one, like, if you look at his stats down the line, it's 22, it's 2019. And you're like, well, what, what happened? I, I like, I'll give him this. He could play a great right field. He, he yeah. played fantastic in right. Um, but other than that, man, oof. Well, and I, I liked him because he was German, because, you know, no one that speaks German could be bad. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, now, I, I was going to bring up, and 
Uh, Alex Kirloff retired. Yeah. Your thoughts? Did we not? We we didn't talk about that, did we? No, I texted you, and I think I guess no, maybe we no. missed it on the last. Uh, one. I you know I didn't lose any sleep over it. Uh, you know, I, apparently the injuries were enough. It, I believe he lost love for the game, you know, like where he was just like, I, I'm, I can't do this anymore. My injuries are more. Now I didn't know this. He got like five kids or something like that. Like he, with his high school sweetheart. Yeah. He's a young guy. I, I right? knew he was, he, he, I know he married her. Like when he was 18, got yeah. drafted, yep. got married. So I, think he, I think he at least got three, you know, and they, but, but that's a guy that is, is saying, okay, I've got to look at the, the the whole picture. And for me as a Twins fan, like, did you ever think Alex Kirilov was ever going to do any, you know, pure hitter, but injury wise, did you ever think that he was going to, and, and, and so for me, I didn't lose a lot of sleep. I like, I wish him the best of luck, uh, but I didn't lose any sleep over it at all. No, I, I wanted I wanted to trade him this off season, kind of like a uh, you trade a, a a a failed prospect for another failed prospect kind of guy, where you just take a flyer. Um, like I would have like, hey, could you maybe try and get Joe Adele from the Angels and just just yeah. see, you know, yeah. what you could maybe get, and maybe it'd be good for both sides. But yeah, like I I didn't. You know, it makes first base a little tougher just because right now it's Jose Miranda and I'm not mm. too keen on that. So, you know. Well, right. Because are they are they going to bring back Santana? I mean, that that's I, been I, a I, I, I would imagine you could get him fairly cheap. However, he won a gold glove, right? He, 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 play, he played a great first base. Right. Uh, but, but you know, look, he I, I'd take him back. I know he's a good clubhouse guy too. And but look, he'll be what thirty nine. No. Do we yep. do we think he's gonna put the same offensive no. output out? Like, but to me, that's the kind of guys that the poll ads, maybe Derek Fal Falvey under the poll ads direction. Those are the kind of guys you're gonna fucking you're gonna go after. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, that is Minnesota. That's what's gonna happen. Because like in, in an ideal world, you know, I would I would hey first base is open. Uh, Let's go get Christian Walker from from the D backs. Let's go sign. Uh, hey, maybe Paul Goldschmidt's got got some uh, some nice years left in the tank. But um, nope, no, it, nope. <laughs> sorry. Um, but you know, it, it's I, I like if Carlos Santana was announced, I, I wouldn't be mad. You know, like right, I, but, but I don't think he's your everyday first baseman though either. Kind of no. like what you're saying, he can't be. Right. So you need, and I don't want, I, I, I guess I don't want another Carlos Santana, Jose Miranda, uh, you know, dueling banjos at first base. I want a legitimate motherfucking first baseman. Right. And that's uh, Rocco likes to play the matchups and, and I'm, yeah. I, you know, I it's fine. I'm, I kind of miss like, Hey, that's my third baseman or like, that's our first baseman. That's right. our left fielder. Every it's like okay, well Matt Walner's out there and left now. Uh, okay, it's Larnick now. Oh, there's uh, Willie Castro's out there now. Uh, oh, uh, Eddie Julian's playing right field now. And it's like, can we get? I I understand the matchup game. I do, but but yeah, it's I worked like so when, well for him so far. I I, I like when it's like, hey, Carlos Correa's the sh the shortstop. Uh, you know, Ryan Jeffers is the catcher. Um, I've, I've heard, and I, I, I wouldn't be opposed. Um, you'd have to figure out your, your catcher position though. Um, could Ryan Jeffers move to first and, and get some more at bats Then he wouldn't have to platoon with, with Vosky. And then, you know, he can get some more at bats. I, I you know, right. I think he could play a good first base. I actually do. Okay. I, I was told, uh, by one of my friends, uh, the twins should sign Alex Verdugo. I know I didn't. It, it to do do we to play first or does no? He I he, he was just throwing that out there that that's that's someone that we should pick up uh, as a free a free agent. Here's, here's the thing to me: the outfield 
like I, I like Larnick, I like Walner, you got Buxton, um, and then I you know, I think you got on the at least on the 40 man, like Deshaun Kiersey's juniors on there who didn't get a lot of run last year, but Castro can play out there. In my opinion, Julian could hit a corner outfield spot. Do you need to sign another outfielder? I'd almost rather let's go get a like if well, I don't know because like well, if, are they going to re-sign Castro though? Well, Cast, I've heard that he could get traded. Um, which I don't know. Castro has been one of my favorite favorite guys on this team for a couple of years now. It yep. feels like just with with what he brings, he he's like to me like Willie Castro, and maybe it's only because they look a little alike, a little bit, but um, hmm. kind of like. Nikhil Alexander Walker is my favorite role player with the with the the the, the Wolves. Willie Castro is kind of that that guy for me on the Twins, but um, I've also seen that they want to potentially re-sign Kyle Farmer, um, which I don't know what is he. Like you're just bringing back the same. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I'm telling you, this is this is what your team's gonna look like. And now you haven't even gone, not not a step forward. You you've now taken a step backwards last year, even though I'd say that's two steps. I'm looking at the Twins taking five steps backwards going into this next season, and that's what I'm worried about. I am. So I, I'll say I'm, I'm worried a little bit about the offense. Um, in my head, the starting rotation I think is actually one of the best in the in the American League. And I'll and I'll I look. Pablo was fantastic in the second half of the season. He was right. his ace stuff. He's still he, he's right. he's an ace. Joe Ryan before the injury was was great. He, he was having Joe a Ryan. very very good year. Right. Bailey Ober will he, be, will he be in in the second half of the season? True. Bailey Ober uh, was showing. Plenty of A stuff. He is a number two. Can Bailey Ober do it two years in a row, though? That's the question. I think oh, so. Okay. Um, Simeon Woods Richardson is finally has a whole year under his belt after throwing the most innings he ever has. Um, I think you'll have a great year from him. And uh, I'm kind of up on Mr. David Festa after he got some run as well. I think it's a fantastic rotation. Okay. Now, uh, Griffin Jacks, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Griffin Jack should not touch a starting spot. I agree. I agree with you. You have a dominant bullpen piece. Keep him there. Do not fuck with that. I agree. Damn, Leah B. Olsen looked good tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Well, um, okay. Um, anything else <laughs> on the uh, on the on the Minnesota Twins or Major League Baseball uh, going forward? Uh. Just, did you see where the Rays are playing this year? I well, no, I heard well, and I heard that their stadium isn't going to. They they were looking at twenty twenty eight as as like the 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 completion time, right? That they were going to play their yeah. inaugural season in twenty twenty eight in the new stadium, right? They're not even looking at that now because of hurricane damage, and you know they had fucking Polish people working on it or whatever it is. Uh, but no, where, where are they going to play this year? They're playing at George Steinbrenner field. Uh, the, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. facility of, yep. of the New York Yankees. Uh, yep. so I now, you've got, now you've got like, and, and it's not, it's not their fault. Like a, a hurricane destroyed their stadium. Um, so I'll give them that, but you've now have two teams that are playing at minor league ballparks in 2025 next year. And yep. one of them is Sacramento. So, yep. oh, I love, I love the world we live in. No, just love it. Okay. And here's the deal. Even if they had a major league stadium in Tampa Bay and they made the playoffs, still nobody goes to watch them fucking play. Get the team, wake up Tampa. You know, that, that is usually when teams leave, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. I was not happy with Oakland moving to Las Vegas or whatever, which shit show again, right? They're playing in Sacramento, but here's the thing. 
you get Tampa Bay Rays out of Tampa Bay and Johnny and I are going to lose any sleep over that because it's a ridiculous baseball town. So get them out of there. Uh, I think a fun, just let's go to, let's go to Sacramento when the twins are, are, I, are in town. Let's go watch. I would, them do that. I would do that. And would you, would you do, do you one better? We'll go to fucking George Steinbrenner field Absolutely. in, in Florida. Yeah. In Florida, yep. and go. In my opinion, move the Rays to Montreal tomorrow. Okay, let's let's get them back in Montreal. So, I'm I'm down for Montreal, but I I do think that's there a are baseball other, city, Noah. It is. It, it, it is. is. There are a couple markets though that have become huge uh, in the U.S. Nashville Nashville needs a team. I'll tell you that. Um, that's they a got big, a, they got a minor league team. Well, yeah, so did Vegas, but I mean, right. I, Nat, Nashville uh, and, and Charlotte are are becoming uh, really big, big markets. Who deserves it more than Nashville and Charlotte, though? Montreal, okay? And uh, I don't yeah. speak fucking French, okay? But the frogs need it, dude. Seriously. I, yeah, I, 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 I'd love I mean, now you got a team in Seattle, but I was like, I, I would love to see more, more. Canadian, like more Canadian uh, baseball team. So, and then well, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I, 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 I would. Yeah, I like the stretch. I, I like. I, I mean, screw it. Let's get a Mexico City. Let's get. Let's play. Let's play ball in Puerto Rico. Let's just let's let's expand. Do you remember when the Twins played ball in Puerto Rico? <laughs> yes. And I'm, all the lights went not. out. All the lights went out, and like, like the whole the whole city, like for two days or whatever. And I didn't say anything about trash floating in the ocean or anything like that. I'm just saying, I don't know. That's a stretch. Puerto Rico. I think NFL wants to move it or have a team in the, in Mexico city, uh, which would be oh. interesting. God bless them. Yeah. God bless them. All right. Uh, any, anything else on major league baseball? No. All right. Well, uh, before we go tonight, uh, a very serious, and sad and sobering experience. Um, no, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, apparently the state of Wisconsin has now claimed another victim in getting them so completely wasted that they throw their career and any kind of good choices completely away, okay? And here's the thing about Wisconsin. My parents are from there, all right? I don't know, Noah, if you have had the experience of drinking in Wisconsin. Um, I have, and I've got friends. I have friends who have shot fireworks off across the street from the police station at five in the morning because they thought it would be a good idea and then couldn't understand why they got arrested. All right. I've had other friends who have played actual demolition derby with their cars on the way home from the bar and then drove them into the woods. Okay. Okay. I myself was so obnoxious one night getting wasted in Wisconsin at 19 years old that I did what I, I thought everyone does. You go steal road signs. I got a speed limit 25 and one of the last wooden uh, cattle crossing signs because at three in the morning, we decided to waste and I ever think of doing something like this again. But yeah, we went out with our toolboxes and we, we took road signs, okay? Jack Del Rio, who does have a place with the Vikings. I don't know if you saw this, but he was the special advisor to the head coach at the University of Wisconsin. A couple of weeks ago in Madison, he got wasted, drove into a stop sign, and then threw a fence and just let the you know car come to a, to a halt. And by the time authorities got there, he was walking on the sunny side of the street, obviously inebriated, and now he quit. And so Wisconsin, another one bites the dust again, again, unbelievable. Now, Jack Del Rio is a former NFL head coach. He coached two NFL teams. He's in his 60s. You, you got to tell me, oh, is it something in the water? No, it's something in the beer, man. They get you. They get you. I saw a list of uh, the top ten drunkest cities, and Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin. Had, 
Wisconsin had seven or eight of, of, yeah, of, of the cities on there. Yep. So. Yep. Um, so I, I mean, I, I would, I would say that, that that's, that that's sad. And I, I don't know if you've had the experience of drinking in Wisconsin, but my goodness, my goodness. I, at 60 some years old, isn't there someone next to Jack Del Rio saying, come on, man. I, you know, I, I, I think maybe make a better choice. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have to, uh, I'll put that on the list of some I need to do, I guess, but I'll make sure someone's with me. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I want to be a part of it either way, because, you know, I got, you know, chicks and guns and fire trucks and everything that we can bring, um, to, to the party. But, uh, anyways, I did, did want to bring that up because our neighbors to the East, I mean, God bless them, but wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay, man. Uh, wolves are just starting. I'm going to flip it over to, what is it? FanDuel. FanDuel Fan Sports Duel. Network. Right, right. Uh, a country that just still does not let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. But now, the network carrying your games is FanDuel betting site. God bless America. Fuck out of here, right? It's crazy. For Noah Storzinger, former sparring partner Mike Tyson, I'm Johnny Boss. This is the show to be named later. Hope you had a good time tonight. We sure did. We'll see you next time. Uh-huh.